Good. All right. So I could see we have a lot of people who have joined us now. So I think we're going to kick off. That's all right. So just want to start by saying um, a big welcome to everyone and welcome back to the UCD What It Takes Employability series. My name is Camille Rogers with UCD Alumni Relations, and this is the sixth and final episode of our spring series, focusing on what it takes to navigate the future of work. Uh, this evening, we'll hear from UCD alumnus Newbie K, who, as he says, is joining us from Meath tonight, um, who works, and he works with um, EMEA Startups at Stripe and is also president of African Professionals Network Ireland. After Newbie's presentation, we'll have 15 minutes for audience questions, led by my colleague, Michelle Cohen, who is a careers consultant with UCD Careers Network. So be sure to drop any questions you have there into the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen, and Newbie will answer as many of them as he can at the end of the session. And finally, this session is being recorded. So if you want to revisit it at any point or have trouble with connectivity tonight, you can always find it on our UCD alumni YouTube channel starting tomorrow. So without any further ado, I'll hand it over to Newbie. Thank you so thank you so much. Um, it's it's really great to be uh, uh, to be here and um, uh, yeah, it's um, no pressure kind of like going <laughs> closing off of the the series, but um, yeah, I, I could do check out a few um, previous episodes that uh, we are recorded and actually posted on the on the website. And I will encourage everyone as well if you've missed any of the sessions, like do go check check them out. I think they're all great content, great resource um, as we think about what it takes to navigate the world in which we, we get it into post post pandemic and um so yeah my name is newbie k um as as mentioned earlier um i work at stripe supporting startups and um I'm also president of api uh, i'm just going to share my screen quickly and uh, we can dive into today's content um i would try to make it as interactive as possible um so i might ask a few questions along the way and you can use the chat to respond um also, if you have any questions, um, uh, please draw them in the chat, um, and we'll get to them at the at the end um, of the of the of the presentation. So, I want to share my queen uh, my sc screen. There's my queen there. Um, I'm going to share my screen real quick, and we'll get started. All right, let's see technology. Um, perhaps the first question I'll ask in the chat is, "Can you see my screen?" Um, I think that's a popular phrase. Um, all good yeah we can see it yeah okay a couple of yes 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 awesome awesome okay so let's let's dive into it so what does it take uh what it takes to navigate the future of work um again before i just jump into it like who you're speaking to my name is newbie um this was uh, from a photo shoot when my daughter turned three uh, and so uh, i told the program how like yeah it's time for me to up, up, update my linkedin photo so let's 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 take a quick picture here um unfortunately my hair was not well done so i couldn't use the picture but yeah still was able to strike the pose um so that's me um i'm nigerian by birth um, but came to ireland in 2013 to ucd actually so i came um i've been done startups in, in Nigeria, I came to UCD to actually come learn how to do startups. Uh, and so uh, it was a great time. Uh, I was in small feet business school doing um, digital innovation, um, doing a master's in, it was called iBusiness back then, but now the name has changed to like business innovation or digital innovation management. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's, the plan was to be here for one year and um, go back to Nigeria. But like you say, um, man plans and God laughs. And so what happened? Why am I still here? Well, I met this wonderful woman. Uh, her name is Nana and she was also in UCD. Uh, in fact, we actually met on campus um, where she was out looking for signatures because she was running for, I think, student rep at the time. And I was like, wow, this here's this ambitious lady, like going out in, in the tick, tick of winter with a winter jacket trying to get as many signatures as possible and I was I really like was I really admired that and um yeah we got we became friends first and then we started dating and then we got married um and um yeah she she recently just published the book she's holding right here called Ni Nigerian Heritage uh you can check it out at afrocolor.ie yeah that's me plugging my wife's book um and yeah like I said I was meant to be here for one year but she trapped me so I'm still here and we have two beautiful daughters um the first one on the left Kike um she's three years old and um Ire was actually born just 
about 12 days ago. So, so really, really new addition to the family. Uh, and so that's 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 me uh, or my person or the person that is actually going to be speaking to you today because I think so many times we forget about our humanity and who we are as people and just jump straight into our careers, what we do and stuff. But like these are the things that make us and really drive us and motivate us into the future. Uh, and so, yeah, that's me um, and my background. Uh, um, and um, we'll talk about the, I'll spend a little, a little bit of time talking about the journey. So just the journey from um, a career and academic point of view. Um, and um, I think there's a, there's a popular saying that says, hindsight is 2020. So you, you get to your destination and you're like, oh, all these steps I took, all these decisions I made, um, all makes sense now it all adds up like i mean i would not have been a better accountant if i had not taken that course or not gone to this place or not had this conversation uh, but while you are doing those things like it might not be as like smooth as possible uh, or the the end to result might not be as as uh, clear uh, as possible uh, and so just want to just tell anyone listening today that um yeah like it's okay not to have figured everything out it's okay to keep to keep going through the motions um but at the end of it all, at the end of it all, it's, it will all make sense. Of course, there are things that you can do, there are tools and there's knowledge that you can have. And I believe that's why we're all here tonight that can help you navigate and get to that destination that you've desired or or you've kind of like aspiring towards. Uh, but it's okay to just again keep moving and keep progressing uh, because it all will make sense at the end of the day. Um and so for me, like um I went through the motions a lot. So like I started as a science student in, in secondary school, um, purely for the reason that I loved maths and, and chemicals in the lab and just the idea of it. Um, I also was big into music. I joined the orchestra um, and um, played the saxophone. I played the, the piano, the, the keyboard, as well as the drums. Um, I was a past, I'm, a, I'm a pastor's kid, by the way. So <laughs> you kind of like inevitably have to kind of like take a pick up this musical instrument. You have to be in the choir and things like that. So, but all of these things were just things that we're getting exposed to. Um, during the summer holidays as well, um, my dad would send us to go learn a new skill. Um, sometimes it was fun. Um, sometimes it was actually painful. So a fun one could be like going le go learn how to say design um design like like posters and flyers uh, and so you're playing with like just colors and, and just creating things um or it could be not so great or not so um glamorous in assembling computers to actually go like volunteer or intern in a in a computer hardware factory and actually like put together like like cpus like the motherboard the rams and all of those chips and all and your hands will actually start like if you've touch the motherboard or like the microchips and all like you, your hands start to start to blister and so that, that was just not also glamorous but again the end results when you actually turn on the computer and actually comes on and everything works of course it's very gratifying um other things we did was like we we're, were learning like things like microsoft word excel powerpoints um coral draw uh, photoshop and just different software um out there as well um and then of course this actually like made me really curious about like just the technology as a whole uh, and so I decided to go study engineering in um for my undergrad um and I would my first poll is actually actually will come now so in the chat if you can guess where this is um just by looking at the picture if you can guess where this place is this is exactly where I actually studied um my undergrad or the city where I studied did my undergrad anyone any takers Yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's Istanbul, um, Turkey. Yeah. So that's um, the, the 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 blue mosque, Sultan Ahmet, um, in the background there. Um, and yeah, that that was where I actually like did my undergrad in engineering. Um, and um, um, and I mean, while is the why Istanbul? Like for me, I, I really didn't want to go to like a popular destination. I really wanted to. I really wanted to just get lost and just like, well, discover myself and stuff. And um, I decided to go to a place where, okay, um, where like, again, the language is not like English first. I would just like, again, make things a little bit more interesting. Uh, and so I read about Istanbul, about a, a city that was at least sitting on two continents. So you cross a bridge and you go from Asia to Europe. Uh, I could tell that from the cuisine, the fashion, the culture and all. Uh, and that was really fascinating for me. And so that was the pool of the attraction for me to go study, uh, do my undergrad there. 
uh, like I mentioned as well, like um, I, I, I did startups in, in Nigeria um, and, and um, came to Ireland to come learn how to actually do it properly. And so I actually came to business school in UCD to, to do that. So that, that's the academic journey uh, for me. Uh, and you can see it's really, really all over the place. Um, uh, of course, there's some like fine lines of thread that guided me and actually like made me um, get to my destination. But again, like I said, it's, it's really just again, in hindsight, those lines or those correlations then make sense. But while I was going through that, it was just like the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Uh, from a career point of view as well, like it's really all over the place. Like my first job was a, being a, a database manager. So that's a fancy way to say just entering <laughs> data into a table uh, and moving them around. Um, I also like again, got hooked on the internet and the yeah, social media was, was emerging. And so I became a, a social media manager as well, just helping brands update their Facebook, Twitter, um there was no instagram back then yeah so it was just facebook <laughs> um uh, and then um i started writing about technology because i was really interested in, in just what's going on in the space and so i started blogging about technology uh so i became a tech blogger and then i went from huh am i just going to write about the story am i actually going to participate in the story am i going to be a player or an actor in the story and so i became a founder and so i actually built my first my first startup as well uh, and i went back to digital media again um, working in, a, in an ad agency and then came to Ireland did UCD and then got a job in Accenture where I was a project manager uh, management officer first and then became a tech consultant got exposed to fintech was like wow okay the future is payment the future is making it easy for people to actually do business online nobody saw COVID coming <laughs> um, but yeah like I was really like okay this is actually like a, a great space to actually like again learn and become an expert in and so I joined Stripe uh, about four and a half years ago um, just uh, as a product specialist and then a program manager and now uh, as a startup uh, supporter that's what I would define my role is I, I work with startups in the EMEA region to start and scale on Stripe so if you look at this again this roles as well like the it's really hard to say, okay, like how do, how do you go from a database manager to a startup supporter? Like, but you can see like, again, it was just like the next and the next and the next thing. And sometimes you actually see some correlations and the sense that you might not say any, but again, like I said, at the, at the very beginning, it's really like, again, being able to go through the motions and knowing that okay, you, you're progressing, you're opening, your, you're opening yourself to new opportunities and new experiences and actually developing yourself as you go along the way. Um, and so this is what the world looks like, to be honest, like it's a lot of like zigs, zig and zags and all just going up and down, round and round. Um, but then you at least you're making progress, you make, you, you're making progress, like you, again, moving forward to, to get to your destination. So let's switch guys a little bit, talk about like emerging jobs. Um, so like what's coming out in the future, I'm very sure like everybody on this call really wants to know, okay, what should I be pushing myself for? What should I be learning? What course should I be taking? And all of that piece of, uh, and all of that. And, and so like, like what's, what, what, what's coming down in the future? Uh, one thing to say is that I mean, you have, for you to really understand the future, you have to actually look at the past, like what has happened in the past. Uh, historical data. What has history told us? What, are, what 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 do we have, what what can we learn from from history? Um, and this I think this poster or this image actually really like does that does justice to that. It says ten years ago, but this is uh, actually fourteen years ago. Just looking at again the time this this art was created. Uh, but again, this art said actually like, ten years ago six jobs six, six jobs did not exist. Um, so app developers was not a thing. We didn't have the Play Store uh, about fourteen years ago. Um, driverless cars you know that i mean driverless cars you know was not a thing and so working in tesla as a driverless car engineer was not a thing 14 years ago uh a youtube content creator so hello welcome to my channel that was not a thing 14 years ago uh, <laughs> uh but now we see all of these careers and 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 I, I really like the diversity in the careers actually on this on this on this poster so from technology like we like they are building technology to like deep tech um like driverless um, technology to cloud computing and then YouTube, YouTube content creator, social media manager, all of these things didn't exist 14 years ago. So what does that mean? That just means that going forward, it's really hard to place or know what roles are actually going to exist in the in the future um, because they're going to like they're going to be new ones that we, we've not even heard of. Uh, but just as a guiding principle, like what industries are we seeing actually emerge right now? Uh, I got in on the show um, at Web 2.0. That's actually like interactive web, so social media and things like that. 
Uh, but right now, I think you are right here in the data world, in the data, like when it's all about data. So artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, um, network automation, like Internet of Things, and then security and privacy. I think that's where we are right now. Uh, and there's so many like emerging roles uh, around this, like a, like the, again, a machine learning engineer, so a data analyst in the new world, because that role perhaps existed before, uh, but now to, to more like AI uh, uh, and things like that. Uh, network and automation. So again, uh, just designing systems, the systems engineering and things like that as well. So there are a lot of roles, a lot of companies like Datadog, um, also in margin as well. Uh, I know there's actually like Ever Vault from in Ireland as well. Uh, that they look about like they talk about like things like security and uh, uh, identity. Um, there's Voyance in, in out of Africa as well. But again, building a global a global company. Um, there's Mono. There's so many start again startups, big and established companies. Even the legacy companies like Salesforce and Oracle as well. Microsoft, Google are uh, actually like again launching um divisions or opening roles in these spaces uh, so even accenture they're, they're consulting your big fours uh, having practices around data ai ml uh, and things like that so um i'll, I'll say like again these spaces again uh, but then you don't have to be um like an engineer or technical to actually function in these spaces like i said i do sales at stripe i'm not an, i'm not i don't code i don't develop and so uh, I would say look at this more like an industry rather than the role or the job because again you can actually have different functions within these industries whether you want to go into comms or you want to be even a, a trainer, uh, a content creator in the spaces, you want to be a recruiter, uh, you want to be like a, a, an engineer, you want to be a, a salesperson, a support person, like all of these things will be required, all these roles and skills will be required within this industry. Um, and so what are the skills in demand? Like how does, uh, how do you position yourself? Or like what are the kind of skills you should be looking to develop to actually function in the spaces? Like I said, I really want to be like role agnostic here. Uh, so I'm actually going to focus on just like transferable skills because I know that you, we can, you can actually apply regardless of the roles they are thinking about, just really thriving. Um, and there, there are three of them and then one anchor one. Um, the first is critical thinking effective communication um, and data-driven um, data -dri data -driven decision uh, making as well as just leadership. Uh, and so I'll start on the first one, which is critical thinking. Uh, for critical thinking, I think it's just very important to be able to like be comfortable with ambiguity. Like everything is not like super clear, but you can actually like again, try to understand, okay, like what's going on here? Ask questions, make assumptions, validate, validate those assumptions, get some data. And just again make those decisions and just continuously iterate on what you've learned or what you know. That's critical thinking, and that's a skill that will actually be applicable in whatever whatever role you you decide. And so, an example to actually like just to, how do you tell one that a critical thinker? The person can say, "Okay, I got into this space. I saw like productivity was low. I asked a few questions. Why is productivity low? Uh, I noticed that it was due to like the tools that we use or the system and the process we have in place." I try to understand what processes are. I made some changes to test if they'll make things better. And after trying for another like two weeks, I noticed that product exactly went up by 20%. That's a critical thing because again, they've gone into a space, they were not super clear about what's going on. They asked questions, made, they made uh, assumptions, they had to validate the assumptions, make, make things better and actually track those things as well. So a critical thinker will be one of a person that will thrive in any future roles that we see in margin. Uh, the second one is effective communicators. Uh, can you actually like articulate what you're saying regardless of your stakeholder, whether they're working with you ex directly on the project or they're far removed and just, you're just working by them in an elevator, they ask you, what are you working on? Can you actually make it concise? Can you make it relatable? Can you make it, make it understandable by anybody? And so effective communicators are going to, it's going to be a skill that's required and will make anyone thrive as well in whatever industry because you will need to work with people, whether in person or remotely, whether directly or as a partner, a customer, like it, all of this, will, how you can communicate and articulate your points uh, will be really key uh, to success. So that's the, the, second, the second skill. And the third one is actually um, data-driven decision maker. Um, and that's, again, being able to, again, collect data, uh, analyze data, 
uh, visualize data as well. Uh, and so there are a lot of like things on tools that you can be familiar with, like what are from Excel to SQL um, to Python and just advanced languages. You don't have to be an expert. Like you just, again, just knowing, understanding the basics is, is a good place to be because when you're not dealing with the expert or those who are more knowledgeable, you can at least at least work with them and, and not be lost in the conversation. Uh, and so can you actually, again, like data, even just a simple Excel sheet, entering rows and summing them up, dividing them, understanding pie charts, graphs and things like that, uh, that would that will really required um, to thrive in in that in that um, in the in, in future roles that we're talking about as well. Uh, the last one is more of leadership, and I have a question again. I'll put in the in the in the chat. If you can ask this answer. Who among these five people is the leader? Who is the leader in those among these five people? If you just put in the chat. Um, let's see. Let's see. The middle person, okay. That's anyone else? The guy with the yellow jumper. Let's go. Yellow jumper. Any of them? The woman helping the man up. Yeah, that's the answer, actually. Yeah, the woman helping the man up is actually the leader in that picture. Um, so yes, you might you might see the person in the suit in the middle and say, Oh, well, he's dressed in the suit, so he has to be the leader. Well, no, not necessarily. Um, you can see the two people like who made it first to the top. I mean, they got there first, so perhaps they're the leader. Uh, you can see the guy struggling. Uh, sorry. Uh, you can see the guy like on, on the ground and say, well, I don't know. How, <laughs> I don't know how to justify him being the leader. But yeah, the lady uh, in the in the trials, in the brown trousers, trying to get the man up is actually the leader. Uh, and that's really, really important because Leadership here is really critical for like any role. And leader doesn't have to be you have to be the manager or you have to be the the, the CEO or the or or, or or someone like in the in the C suite. No, leader is like thinking beyond me. Like how else can I carry people around me as well? Like, yes, I've made it up the first block. Can I actually get other people on that journey with me? Uh, leadership is about advocacy. Um, I don't know why I'm raising up my hand. I'm going to hand down. <laughs> uh, leadership is about advocacy. Uh, it's about like speaking up on behalf of like whether it's your users, your customers, your team, your your organization. Just again, a leader is someone who can, who can advocate. It's about thinking again, like my team, like beyond me, how can I carry others along? Uh, a leader is also about building the foundations because again, if the foundation is weak, like again, we'll all, we'll all suffer. But if I lay the foundations, um we can actually go further we go um i mean there's african pro that says you can go far alone but you go further together uh, and so it actually thinks um as that as a psyche and thinks that way and then it that thinks also about sustainability and scale so how can i empower other people to multiply to have the multiplier effect of what i can do i mean myself i can work eight hours a day but can I actually again put processes in place or put things in place that will make my team um make my team work more effectively uh, and thinking again, how can they, they do uh, sustainably? Like again, pr processes in place where there's no burnout or people are not getting frustrated in their jobs and also a leader is really thinking about sustainability and scale. And so whatever role you're applying for, whatever you're looking at, whatever position you're looking at, I think it's really important to think about our leadership quality as well. And all of this skill that we talked about all ties into one thing, delivering results. Um, Nobody's actually going to look at you or like no matter how of a critical thinker you are or a good communicator you are or you can make all the data decisions in the world. If there are no results, if there's no like end products or like, again, like whether it's saving money, um, cutting costs, increasing productivity, making money, um, um, show it, give it time. I mean, have an impact. If we have none of those things, um, we're not able to deliver a result, then that that's really, really um, problematic. And so, all of these skills that we've mentioned all have to tie to deliver, being able to deliver, deliver results. And the last section where we have for, we have for this talk where we're going to questions is um, um, work in a post-pandemic world. Uh, and so, there was a lot, last thing I was supposed to touch on. Uh, just my thoughts on what work will look like in a post-pandemic world. Now, I'm very sure many of us have gotten over the hump of like the, oh, the work has changed. We're all going to be remote now. We've gotten to the point where it's like, nah, please take me back to the office. Uh, and so I think it's going to be 
an hybrid world. I think it's going to be the best of both worlds where we are actually going to have the in-office um, experience as well as the remote experience. So for me, for example, uh, I'm looking at when, when the office opens back again to do more like a, a two day in the office, two to three days in the office and the other two or three days depending on the week at home. Uh, and the reason for this is like, I mean, for the in-office that allows us to have the social, uh, being able to have that social interaction, uh, allow, allow us to have, have those water cooler conversations, uh, also allows us to have like those brainstorm, um, brainstorming sessions. I just serendipity, like not, not planning, but just again, walking into someone and just like having that idea or picking up cues for what someone, someone that can just set right beside you. Um, what was well, that? So also the upside of remote as well, like inclusion. I mean, with remote, you're, you're, you're breaking the barriers of time zone. You're, you're thinking, okay, how can we more inclusive? How, how, how can we get more people um, involved? Uh, and so that's very important. Uh, also documentation, there's people, write, people are writing more. Uh, people are writing more, people are, are, are doing, uh, uh, are putting like resources together because again, like people are not always there, people are not always live. So people are obviously able to like refer to things. And, and I mean, it's like study have shown the more documentation you have, the more productive or the more um, efficient a team or, or an organization actually works. So we'll see the more documentation uh, as a result of working remotely. Um, there's also the as asynchronous communication. So you're not always like, again, always on or always expecting someone to respond immediately. People are comfortable with like, okay, you I, I send you a message, I wait, and then you, you reply to me. Uh, and so that would also be, will be, will be a, a, a pro uh, of, of working remotely. And then finally, just quality of life. Um, I commute like to work like one hour, going one hour, coming that's two hours a day, that's 10 hours a week. And I'm cutting that down by again, 20, 40% on a weekly basis. That really like makes life, uh, quality of life better. Um, so I will have saved on the bus, taking in films or just <laughs> pollution. Um, I can actually be in my house and, and actually just again, turn off my laptop um, at at, uh, at six o'clock and actually again, um, um, start start work. Uh, and while we're doing the prep, someone actually asked me like, yes, like um, working from home, there's that blur between um, work and actually life, work-life balance. Uh, and I think once that actually worked for me and again, just putting out there in, for, in, in case people are thinking, how do I balance those two out? Can I actually switch off and then at least get to my life and not work till 8 p.m. and things like that? Uh, I think just having kind of like anchor events in between uh, and that could be as simple as just having dinner with your family at half six or six, because then you know that is there's something and put it down on your calendar so you're... you're <laughs> Your colleagues respect that. Okay, that can be as dinner at six, at six with his family every day. So that's the that's the cut. That's the cutoff. Uh, and so you know, you can okay, yeah, I'm putting my laptop down because I have, I have this commitment to my family. It could be just even hanging out with friends. It could be having a jam session, whatever it is, watching a movie and stuff like just putting something that like would make you break from work into life or work into play. Uh, I think that's that's essential and will be important for this hybrid world that we, that we go into. Um, and so to round off the, the key takeaway is that if you don't take anything else from this <laughs> from this at all, like please just take this five takeaways when it comes to the key takeaway, uh, what it takes to actually navigate the future of work. And the first is actually to be comfortable saying yes to opportunities. Like I mentioned earlier on day, like hindsight is 2020. And so just keep saying yes to opportunities as long as they will make you grow, as long as they'll make you pick up a new skill, as long as they'll make you uh, expose you to interesting people as well. Um, number two is actually acting on curiosity. There's a famous saying that curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought it back to life. Uh, and so don't just, don't, don't just be curious, act on that curiosity. If you like are thinking, oh, what's what's this about? What is what are NFTs about? What are this, what is this about? What is this industry about? Act on it, like Google, watch video, review to videos, go on Khan Academy, go on Coursera. Just learn and just meet people and have conversations about those things. Act on your curiosity. And um, number three is actually build your learning muscle. Like I mentioned, many jobs that many jobs that would actually exist when you are finishing college um, are not yet created or are being created right now. So rather than learn learning to be the best X or the best Y, why don't you just like learn at be, being able to learn to be the best? So building your learning muscles so you can always again like unlearn what you know and relearn if you need to. 
So your learning must be the focus. You can actually like again learn new things rather than again just learning um, everything that that's available out there. Uh, number number four uh, is aim to try at the intersections. Um, and what it just means is that right, you could choose to be the best at something, or you could just be you could be choose to be good at things together of two things. I'll give you an example. You could be the best data analyst in the world, and that's good. That's that's fine. But it's really hard to like keep that position because a better data analyst will come along and you're no longer the best. But what if you had again a great data analyst and also a great presenter? You could actually present what you actually analyzed. Then an, an, an organization actually sees you as more valuable because you have two things. You you have you can analyze data, you can also present. So if you need one or the other, you can actually use it for that. And if they needed to do the two, you can also you also offer the challenge. And so this was an advice I got early in my career that yes, you can be great at one thing and that's good, but there's always that pressure about you again, try to just stay on top. <laughs> um, or you could actually find again at the intersection of what you're good at and actually like again, be more valuable to a future employer or to whatever business you actually want to go into. And then the final thing is actually like know how to articulate your skills. I think this is really, really important. There's many people who actually like, know things or can do things but do not actually like again say it whether it's on their cv or on their linkedin or in, in an interview i think it's important to actually spend time knowing how to actually articulate your skill and it only comes from practice uh for example i, met, I mentioned um, in my in my in my career uh or when i was talking about my um like, let me let me just give an example i've seen people who actually said um oh well, yeah i mentioned in my in my in my example that i, I played in the orchestra uh now that's that's cool. But if I can actually like articulate and say, by playing in the orchestra, I was able to understand teamwork. Uh, I was able to like, again, work, work in a team. Because again, an orchestra, you're playing just a piece that all comes together from different players to actually, again, make the, the music that you, that you actually present. And so by being on the orchestra for three years, I actually like worked in a team. Same thing, I, I mean, so teamwork, I was able to like, like know my role, know how to work with my teammates, Know how to learn, get information. Know how to actually follow directions as well from the from the from the conductor, uh, and so things like that are very very key. So it's like okay, yes, I can play music, or I know, I, <laughs> or my hobby is my hobby is music. To actually like oh, actually like build teamwork by being there, by being part of the orchestra. I think it's really important to know how to actually articulate those skills and those knowledge that you have because that is really what the employer sees and says, huh, yes, I want him. Not because he's good in he's good in music. But no, is a is a great team is a great team player, and there's evidence of that. Um, so these are the five key takeaways. I'm going to actually stop there. Uh, and my last question for the night, again using the chat, is: Did this all make sense? <laughs> so you can just say uh, you can just say yes, no, and to what degree of yes this actually made sense, and we go into the Q and A. But thank you so much, and I, I really hope this was valuable to to you. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks, newbie. Um, I think definitely it made sense. Uh, really great presentation and lots of interesting talking points there. So we have some questions coming in. Um, I suppose firstly, what, what like the hybrid model, it sounds it sounds great. It sounds the ideal, doesn't it? A perfect blend of, of work and uh, working from home and in the office. You benefit from both. But from a graduate point of view, like your experience, so you have quite a bit, you know, uh, you're probably a little bit more aware of kind of your work-life balance, but what advice would you have for a new graduate or there might be people here who employ graduates? Um, what can they do to help a graduate kind of manage that hybrid uh, working uh, environment? Yeah, um, uh, uh, yeah, that, that, that's, that's a good question. And like I mentioned, uh, the first thing which I mentioned was about the anchor, having like an anchor um, event that makes you switch from one to the other. Uh, for me, it's just dinner with the family. Like everybody knows, half six is dinner time, um, and um, being able to put that on my calendar and, and have my colleagues respect that, not book meetings at half six because you know nobody says family time. And I have I have colleagues who would put things like um, school run or uh, put things like going on going on a walk or commuting on their time on their calendars. 
so that again yeah. it's just visible and evident to everybody and nobody go, go nobody goes booking a meeting there so i think that's the first thing just again having those things that would make it easier for you to make this way because i have i mean i'm going to be real here to say without those things you can you can easily work yourself up till 10 p.m because it's you're, you're there online everybody's there on slack you're <laughs> pinging each other and also the day the hours fly by really fast and so it takes a lot of intentionality I think other things just having just conversations. So just being open to your manager. What are again, if you don't hire people, having a conversation because the truth is that not. I mean, there's, a, there's this shift away from the old work-life balance to work-life blend, and that's because some people don't mind to work in twelve hours a day. Like people are wired that way. They love their job. They want to do that. So. Uh, I think having that conversation and setting that expectation as like, oh, this is who I am. This is my person. This is, I mean, I've got a family. I've got a kid. But you, like, I mean, you're single. You're fine. You love your job. You could do 12 hours a week. Then let's actually work with your expectation. I think having that conversation is really, really key because then at least, at least there's an understanding and there's no surprises when people when um, they need to actually, again, uh, manage, manage your time. So those two things, I think, would be my advice. So first of all, having those anchor, anchor um events to switch between one world the in office to i um, to life and things like that uh, and then having the conversations with your manager or with, with the employer employee relationship as well just to help set an expectation and so everybody's on the same page very good okay so that's the anchor events that's really really good um because we're not used to seeing kind of those type of things in people's personal calendar so that's that's a really good good tip um and that conversation with your manager if you're not sure um very good so thank you um an interesting question here i'm just bring it up what role do you think what roles do you think are most at risk of becoming redundant in this new world of where like future technologies kind of are overtaking some some current roles. Yeah, I, I think I think it's going to be hard to say any role is like future proof. Like any role is 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 um is at the risk of going away. Um, but I think the the ones that would first go away are anything anything you can automate. So anything that a, a machine can do, um, anything that like like repetitive, low risk um doesn't require a lot of like just like doesn't require like critical thinking or creativity or just that kind of like again spontaneous kind of like sporadic um uh, creation um so anything that's really like repetitive low risk and just like yeah you're doing over and over and over and over again um is the i think is the first thing at risk of going and so anything that, that can be automated um and so the, again this is where the whole like machine learning ai IOT comes into play where your fridge knows that you're out of milk and gets the milk for you ordered and delivered to your house. Anything, anything that can, can actually just be automated is at the risk of good. <laughs> so that, that, that's how I'll put it, but uh, I would say again, it's really hard to say like the future uh, is going to be an interesting one. So I would just, which is why I really, I say it's what it really important to focus on just knowing how to learn because then a lot of us would need to pick up like new skills, new knowledge, uh, as time go by, refine, become specialists, become generalists. Um, and so, yeah, I, I was, it's, it's, I don't know if it sounds grim, but let's like say like all oh, jobs, all oh, jobs are at risk, but uh, I think the first line will be anything that can be automated. So if you think about it, any job industry where you see yourself doing the same thing over and over and over again, day in, day out, uh, yeah, that's, that's risky. Okay. But on balance, there's lots of new roles coming up all the time. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, the old, the old thing about, like, machine taking our jobs and there will be no jobs, that's that's not true. Like, there will be new things for folks to, for people to do. Uh, and there will be spaces in which, like, it's going to be really hard for machine or technology to really invade. Or if they do, it's, it just would not be, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be the same. So, like, the, 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 the filmmakers, the... The writers like will always will always have the have those. Okay, okay, very good. Um, so, the, so obviously, cause hybrid is on a lot of people's minds at the moment, especially as we're coming out of lockdown. It looks like some of us will be going back into offices, and what's that going to look like? So there isn't an, just another question, like around that. Like, in your opinion, is there? Is there anything, any barriers you would see or any concerns around that hybrid model or do you see it as a real positive thing? Uh, 
so what is it bar like barriers on the side of the employer or on the other well order? yeah like so concerns that like where uh, you know what, what like would productivity be lost uh, right will team engagement decrease and anything yeah. like that yeah i mean that, that, that that's why i'm again i'm, I'm more of the hybrid school because I'm, I'm i'm thinking it's more like getting the best of both worlds if you will like yeah. so if whatever you're thinking are the cons of remote then we'll get that from the in-person what about the cons of uh, in-person and it's like i mean like if you can have in it but um i think where the challenge will come is like does the balancing act like how do you balance both like how do you make sure that there's still some structure um like am i am i coming into the office any two days of the week or am i coming in monday and tuesdays and, and that's it um because again like i mean when you start okay like okay if, you, if you're if you're um, if you're dealing with like space, like infrastructure, the space you're dealing with, or just servicing those people, perhaps having people just come in sporadically might just be problematic. Uh, I think the, the, the other risk I see from the remote side of the hybrid um, equation is the like privacy and security. Um, in the news recently, there was about like there was a, like in the news there, there was news about um, having some like people install cameras in their house so their employers could see. That they're actually working and stuff and then that, that's going to be problematic because like that's like you're bringing cameras into people's houses now their, their office and their and their house is the same uh, and so it's like wait like yeah you can monitor me at work but i'm working from home so can you actually monitor me in my house and so i think there'll, there'll be some interesting legal privacy security like issues uh, as we go but i think we'll figure it out um, because i think some organizations even pre-pandemic we're fully remote already and we're able to do that in a way. And so I think we'll just take the learnings from those kind of organizations uh, for those who are then looking to adapt. But I think it's going to be more of a balancing act as to like how can we get the best of both worlds without again um, um, amplifying the, the the downsides of, of either world. Very good, very good. No, it's interesting to hear your, your take on it. Um, so Colin has a, a question um, and he uh, obviously has been working, uh, doing remote working for a while, but he's just interested to your opinion. Do you think companies like Stripe will have more global teams um, spread across different regions working on projects, but people are in different time zones and countries? And you may do that already to a certain extent. Yeah. Do you think yeah. it's going to come uh, like even more? I was going to say that we already we already did that already. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so yeah, like uh, we we in fact we have um, the like we we call it like the the hub like the remote hub where like people are actually working fully remote and like I said we we, we have to go talk to those people a lot to really understand like again when we actually go into the like lockdown it's like oh like how do you how do you function as a remote part of an organization and so. Like for them, the pandemic is just like, oh, there's a pandemic, but I'm still working from, from home anyways. Um, so like, but to, to answer your question, like, yes, we're doing that already. Like I, from my, at least all my roles that I've been at Stripe, I think that's about three roles now. Like there's always been a global element to that where you just have to know how to be comfortable working async. So I send you this, you come on, you reply, I come on, I take it on, being able to pass the ball uh, and just, explore ways to be to be to be as efficient as possible with those with those constraints or with those restraints um, um i think the we have overlapping hours as well so knowing okay like i'm likely going to focus on work where i don't need that dependency in my hours and then focus on collaborative work on those overlapping hours i think as well working around those realities as well um so i, I think uh, and the thing that it's to be more there'll be more and more of that because with the pandemic we're actually forced to do this 100% of the time. And so uh, I see more, more of those kind of collaborations into the future. Brilliant, very good. So exciting times for, for sure. Yeah. Um, Mary had a question just around um, her sense of the recruitment market that was, she was getting advice that pre-COVID um, employers focused on like attitude and that they can teach skills. Um, but now with remote working, they, they're now emphasizing it's skills that's the most important thing. Do, do you agree with that? I think skills has always been important, like pre or post COVID. Um, uh, at least, at least from, uh, for the industry that I play in. But I, I definitely understand the point that's like, 
yeah, there is that oh can do attitude. So um, just have that that like willingness to learn, and then yes, we will show you the ropes, and which is kind of like harder now with 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 the lockdown or with the pandemic because then it's harder to to teach um, people as well. Um, or it's not it's not as easy to to teach people. Um, so I, I I definitely I definitely agree with the sentiment there. Um, but I, I would just like encourage folks to, uh, regardless, just focus on still acquiring the skills. Uh, whether it's, I mean, whether you, whether the, the companies are looking for just the can-do attitude without the skill, I think you, you're better placed or better positioned if you have the skill. Uh, but yeah, I, I agree with the sentiment that yes, um, the luxury of just going for those who are willing to learn um, might might not be uh, might not be as much with with uh, in a post in the post pandemic pandemic world. I think that's also worth noting that in the post pandemic world, like we're not we're not going to go back to the pre pandemic world. So it's not like oh this will blow over and then we're back to. So I think people should just get used to the fact that this is again not the new normal, but like it's it's gonna like this is this is gonna stay with us for for a long time. Uh, and so again, just keep again acquiring skills. Uh, where you can. Um, I'll give you an example quickly on, on this. So a lot of people say, oh, I would like to work in an ad agency. Um, is I, I have the can do, can do attitude, um, but uh, I've not had the opportunity to actually like, like show that I can do this. And I, I will say things like, can you just like start a blog and review like ads? Just like look at this Vodafone ad or look at this ad on TV and write like your do, do a just do like a, a review like okay this is my thoughts on the ad this is where i think it could be better this is what was there with me and if you do that for like 50 businesses <laughs> that's a portfolio already and so uh you could actually walk into any, any ad agency i see i've actually like reviewed and this is if i if you actually if i if i was put in charge of actually running this ad for vodafone like this is what i've done instead of what they have done and do that comparative analysis and all so i think gonna i mean it's really going to be hard to say oh i didn't, I didn't have a, the opportunity to actually build that skill anymore like there's so many things you could do even if it's for free even if it's like just voluntary i think there's so many things you could do to actually show an employer today that you have those skills um uh, and yes we may not have, uh, have the opportunity to have done that in a nine to five but i think you can actually still hint at those yes i can do this thing uh, and so i would just encourage anybody uh, and we live in dublin as well in ireland or where startups are are really a thing the ecosystem is is real here so even just working working for a startup for three months six months it was like should i actually have that, that skill set i think is really it will be a, a, a good one for folks to explore brilliant and um, i suppose moving kind of continuing on from that the skills question is there is there online courses that particularly grab your attention if you've seen them on a cv even if you were hiring in your team um or is there online courses even just in the in your in the sector you work in that are kind of really favorably looked upon any recommendations so that's coming from garold yeah uh, courses no but i think from again like it's it's more like like what, what like what knowledge have you gotten and what have you been able to apply that knowledge um, okay. I don't think I will see any course on the CV that would that would jump out. So that I really don't. I mean, perhaps certifications or stuff. I, mean, I know in some kind of like industry, like marketing, you know, like things like I mean, the digital marketing institutes where you can get like certification and things like that. Perhaps yeah. those. Perhaps that could actually. But I think that for me, that that's even more of a. I would say that more as a cherry on the top rather than the the the, the core itself. I think again, I'll be. I think the focus should be more like what do you know and how have you applied what you what you know, um, versus like oh I did this course. Um, so if you did the course, like what, what, like what did you take away from the course and how have you applied that? I think that that jumps out more. Um, and yeah. using the star approach, that's the situation, task, uh, action, and and results. Using that to actually talk through um, um, that that knowledge and that and that skill, I think that that's for me is more important than just saying I did this course or yeah, I took this course. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, very good. Um, so that, that makes sense. So if there is a particular course you see, like how you've applied it rather than just a list of courses that you've done, maybe is, is le less impactful. Very good. Yeah. Well, we have time maybe for one more question. I'll just let if someone wants to type that in. But maybe just if you could tell us like what you enjoy most about your job. So what, what do you love about your role? Oh, I <laughs> love meeting I love meeting founders. Um, so just to get context, I I work on the EMEA startups team within the Souls Org. Um, and so we meet with people who are already on Stripe or use Stripe to, to power their business and, and just talk to them as to like, okay, um, how are you using Stripe? Um, how are you leveraging what we have? How, how, like, what are your plans for the future? How can we be a partner with you and to help you actually, again, get to, get to that destination? What are your challenges as well with Stripe and how can we also address those? So I'm always like speaking to founders, um, like CEOs, CTOs, that's chief executive officers or chief technology officers, head of finance, and just people who are really building amazing things on the internet that sometimes I just like stumble into, into them like, wow, so like me building this, um, what I for like um, snacks for, 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 for pets, uh, so uh, a subscription business for, for that to like um, POS machines or POS services for, for restaurants to what like just really interesting businesses or like uh, an e-commerce site for 50 years old women and above just like just catering for that niche market uh, and really doing really well uh, and so I just enjoy just meeting with these founders talking to them and seeing how we can better partner and have them really get to like pretty much deliver on their aspirations uh, so for me no single days I mean no two days are ever the same because you're speaking with different businesses and me as a region is like again um, Europe Middle East and Africa like just again the diversity of users countries locations and all geos makes that really exciting so yeah um uh it's uh, yeah i love it i love it i love doing that i mean if, if you've not if not known by now like I, I'm, I'm a big startups person so yeah, uh, yeah. I, and it's a by art so i really anytime i do with startups which is why again ireland is a great place um for that like the a lot of like entrepreneurship programs is it, accelerator and i, I think even the even ucd has got like the the um the, the innovation center as well like so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's great yeah well, we we can definitely tell you love your job because it's a big <laughs> when you're talking about your job. Um, but it's great to see someone so passionate about their role and their career and, and enjoying it and being being so happy. Um, and it was so great to hear your your take, especially the position that you're in and kind of the view you have of the industry. And just uh, it's I guess it's an exciting time. Um, we're all waiting to see how what work looks like. <laughs> so it's very yeah yeah your your talk today um so there's lots of interesting questions there but i, I guess i'm conscious of, of time hopefully we've had a chance to answer as many as possible um but i know camille has some uh, some information she wants to share as well so thanks very much newbie for your your time and i'll hand back to thank you thank you michelle, <laughs> thank you, michelle. yeah <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. And yeah, just to echo what Michelle was saying, that was really cool to get um, a little snippet into your world there at the end um, in terms of your day-to-day. Your -day. So um, thanks so much, Newbie, for that presentation. That was amazing. And thank you, Michelle, for your steer on our audience questions and for your steer really on um, the Q&A for this whole series. Uh, so um, for everyone who's tuning in tonight as well, um, just remember that if you're a student or a recent grad from UCD, you can always take advantage of the many events and consultant advice available with the UCD Careers Network if you liked what you saw today. Um, and thanks for just tuning in tonight, especially when it's such a nice evening outside. Um, if you're looking to connect with Newbie on LinkedIn after this session, you can find the link to his profile um, here in the chat box. And if you want to view any of the slides that are presented today, um, as well as numerous other resources from the series, you can find them in the What It Takes resource hub on the UCD Alumni Network, which is also being linked here in the chat. Um, also, so as I mentioned at the start of this episode, um, this is the last one for the What It Takes Spring 2021 series, but we will be back in the autumn with our next employability series. So in the meantime, you can catch up on all of our episodes to date and keep an eye out for future episodes on the What It Takes series website, which we have being linked here in the chat as well. 
And lastly, um, as always, this series aims to support our UCD community with career development opportunities, but we'd also like to mention our commitment to supporting our students through the COVID crisis. Generous funds have been raised thanks to alumni and friends of UCD like you. And if you'd like to support our efforts or provide urgent financial and mental health support to those students who need it most, you can visit the link in the chat here too. So that's all from us tonight. Uh, thank you so much again for joining us this evening and hope we'll see you again next time. Take care.